California Republican Congressman Ed Royce is here with me. He's the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, Congressman, thanks very much for joining us. You satisfied with what you're hearing from the Obama administration? Uh, two hours ago, I was with an ambassador from France, and we were talking about this operation. Uh, what's necessary right now is that the Gulf states come in, the Saudis, the UAE. I met with their ambassadors yesterday. Now is the time, frankly, for them not only to open up the checkbook, but also to send the message throughout the region that this has to be on the ground a campaign in which, you know, we see Kur the 190,000 soldiers in the Kurdish army. The Peshmerga. The Peshmerga. And we see the awakening, as they call it, again, the Sunni awakening that helped defeat al-Qaeda. They've offered to help on that, on training, on equipment, and so forth. It, but they want to see it happen quickly, and I think speed is of the essence now. The ground troops we're talking about are Iraqi troops from the Iraqi army, even though they, mm -hmm. they didn't fare well in the fight against ISIS. The Peshmerga, the Kurdish fighters, and the moderate Syrian rebels. Those Correct. are the ground troops the US, of the 40 coalition partners, including any of the neighbors of Iraq and Syria, or Turkey for that matter, any of the NATO allies, have any of them committed to ground forces to fight ISIS? Not one has committed to ground forces at this time. Why is that? And I think part of it has to do with uh, trepidation about getting involved in that part of the world, in that cauldron. Uh, but I think all are willing to put something up in terms of payments for it, uh, in terms of helping to train. And some of them will have their intelligence agents on the ground, but I don't think they're going to bring brigades in on the ground. I think they want it visibly to the Arab world that Kurds and Arabs are doing the fighting, and it's, it's not outside because countries let's, let's, except with air support. Let's be honest. ISIS may represent a threat long-term to the United States. It represents a much bigger threat to the folks in that part of the world. An immediate threat yeah. to the ones you're naming, so let's including through, Jordan. Let's go through some of these countries. The United right. Arab Emirates. Are they willing to use air power? They've got a pretty robust air force, largely U.S. supplied. Are they ready to use air I, power? I believe they will. It's what about under Saudi consideration Ra right now. What about Saudi the Arabia? The Saudis have been pressed. I don't know if they will or not, uh, but we are pressing them as we speak. What about Turkey, a NATO ally? Turkey will not, and we're having great difficulty with Turkey right now, and that is the great disappointment. Uh, they will agree to close their borders. We're looking at how to, how to pass some legislation on terror finance in order to stop the money that is going to ISIL from some of the Alibabas, some of the thieves that operate through Turkey. Their government should shut those people down now. Will Turkey at least allow a fellow NATO ally, the United States and France for that matter, to use NATO air bases in Turkey like Incirlik to go ahead and launch airstrikes against ISIS targets in Iraq and Syria from Turkey? You're now, you're now discussing the very questions we're having internally about what it means to be a NATO ally and what it means to be an ally of the United States if you're not willing to do this. And for the umpteenth time, we see this resistance in Turkey, and it is becoming a big issue on the Hill right now. Is, what would you like the president to do right now? Because, you know, there's been a lot of criticism that he isn't formally asking you, the members of Congress, for no. authorization. Uh, you did give him authorization no. to train and arm Syrian rebels. But, but a lot of members, I, I suppose you would like to do a lot more in terms of giving them a formal notification of authorization. And what we're keen, what we're keen off of are the suggestions uh, out of the Pentagon, but also out of the intelligence services that say, look, you've only done 176 airstrikes. You know, it should be thousands of airstrikes coming in right now on these targets. Uh, one of the operatives told me the other day, think of what we did, you know, as I shared with you during the Gulf War, first Gulf War, driving, driving uh, the invaders out of Kuwait, 118,000 airstrikes. This is, is so slow walking, this operation. Why haven't we armed the Kurds yet? We're going to run legislation. Um, I've int I'm introducing it now in order to make certain that the Kurds have the weapons that I mean, their foreign minister keeps telling me as of three days ago. They still haven't received. The, Kur the Kurds want the weapons to come directly from the United States to the Peshmerga, not go through Baghdad. They don't trust that regime. It never that arrives. Government. The new regime, never the arrive. old regime, they're not happy right. with either one. I spoke with a top official from Kurdistan right here uh, on CNN the other day. He said this new government in Baghdad basically has 90 days to get their act together. Otherwise, Kurdistan is going to think about a referendum to secede from Iraq. Those are strong words you hear from a top Kurdish official. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you, Wolf. Thank you Appreciate very much. It.